The following program contains language and subject matter that are adult in nature. Viewer discretion is advised. The time is now. Everything that we've taught you, we've done so in an orderly fashion so that you will be prepared for this moment. On the field, there is Ken and you. Work together as a unit, as friends, and as a teammate. Do not let emotions get into this game. Play football. Have fun. Be smart. All right, we've done this for 51 practices now. Practice is over. All right, you have your game pants, you have your game faces. I see some more paint on, and I see some jerseys and everything staring back at me says quake, all right? We are a team, act like a team on the field today. The coaches will put you in the best position so that we can succeed. Have fun, ladies. It's a beautiful game, enjoy it. Women's Tackle Football, WTF, what else does that stand for? What the, yeah, exactly. That's the reaction I usually get when I tell, you know, people I coach Women's Tackle Football, what the? Well, first I told mom, I was like, oh, mom, I'm going to be playing football. She was like, oh, that's cool, like, flag football should be fun, you know, and I was like, no, I'm playing tackle football. Why would you want to do that? And I'm like... It's fun, you know? You know, when men generally, or I should say society, um, look at women, we're dainty, we're mothers, we're sisters, you know, we're supposed to be at home, and these, you know, we're not supposed to be out there, you know, sweating, working hard, you know, putting our bodies in, in, in harm's way and things like that. You know, as, as an Asian girl, I was raised to be docile so it's not it's not uh, ladylike to be violent especially physically violent so it took me a little while of getting used to on the aggressiveness of you know of playing football but that was a little adjustment Some girls come out there and they just want to be a part of a team. They just want to be a part of something special. That's wonderful. I commend them. I welcome them. You know, uh, some people just want to get in shape. Football is a great way to get in shape. I'm out there to win a motherfucking championship. I'm out there to make a career out this shit. You know, I, I, I'm not out there to play. I'm not out there just to hang out. This is my life. This is what I choose it to be. How you doing? Hello, I'm talking back. So, uh, how have you been? I'm doing okay. Doing okay. Um, you know, previously you were working on my right shoulder. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Today I'm in here for my left shoulder. For your left shoulder? Yes. Um, I have a finger up under my shoulder blade. So mm -hmm. it's my rhomboid, um, my traps, and it's moved down into my arm. Football is everything. Whatever I got to do, I'm willing to do so. All my dreams and aspirations revolve around football. I mean, I work a day job to support my football career. It's just what it is, you know, my sixth season. So, God willing, I will continue to play. Yeah, that, like that whole area right there. So, was someone tackled you from behind or the front? I was tackling someone else. Mm -hmm. ready to hit somebody. <laughs> That's my favorite part about football, hitting. So, what do we get? Ooh, here we go.
when we're out there, you want to walk the field, you want to make sure that there's nothing sharp out there, you want to get any rocks out the way. I mean, our field is turf, so you're not going to find too much of that, but other fields, you're not going to know what you're going to find out there. And uh, you got to know what's up with the field. You got to become one with the field. You got to feel that shit. You got to know just everything. You got to feel the energy. You got to allow the field to feel your energy. You want to visualize the attack. You want to go out there and, I mean, if you don't believe in yourself, then who will? You got to know you are the shit. You got to know. I, <laughs> I, I can't even talk. <laughs> I'm just like, man, you go out there and you just feel it. You imagine yourself with me. I'm imagining interceptions. I'm imagining hitting bitches. I mean, I'm imagining just taking the quarterback and just fucking her up. I, I want to devour them bitches. I want to eat them alive and just, ah! Like, so you got to feel that. You got to allow the field to feel you. You know, you got to go out there and, and just walk in and allow that energy to just take over you, take control. We are! Dear Father God, we come to you. Father said, thank you. Thank you for bringing these beautiful ladies together to execute a game that some probably thought we would never be able to play. Father God, we thank you for our ladies, Father, and giving up their time from their families. Father God, please look on our players. Keep them safe. Keep them strong. Take care of their bodies, their bones. If they hurt, heal them so they can get back out there and do something that they love. Father God, look on the ones that are already injured. Heal them so they can get out and play and have a good time with the rest of them. Father, this I ask and many other blessings in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Nobody gets through the fucking line of scrimmage. No way. Go!
football actually might be like a an alcohol, a drink, drinking liquor. It it lowers your inhibitions. Um, I mean, there are things you you can't do or say at work, and there are things you certainly wouldn't do or say in front of your kids <laughs> or your husband that you feel completely comfortable saying and doing with your teammates or to your teammates. And uh, and honestly, there have been times when we we've actually been playing football where the where you know we use foul language <laughs> and you know but who does it I mean when you're playing a sport and it gets competitive and things are you know you're getting annoyed at something or you know things are really tight or you know the girl across from you just hit you upside the head <laughs> you want to use language you probably wouldn't use at work or at home it was what do you do for a living I'm like well my day job I'm a graphic designer but my career is football and that's how it is like I that's what we want you know it's like to be able to just Play football. My career is not football. She doesn't know it yet. <laughs> Let's she go on, go on. <laughs> These girls are practically your family. You spend so much time with them. Future quick player. We start him young. Remember what did we talk about? Keeping your head to swivel, right? Remember that? Stay low. Remember? Yeah. She's like, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. Ideally, the reason why I first started playing football was to hit. I love hitting. It's just it helps. It's kind of you know for me it's kind of like a therapy. You know, it's to be able to have that you know that frustrating day that you know something bad happened or whatever, you just, you know, you keep, screaming is just not good enough. But you go on that field, whether it's practice or the game, you lay somebody out and you're like, ah, I feel good, let's do it again. what happened to you and it's like football football happened that's all <laughs> well, but sport I'm, baby well, but I'm okay you should see the other girls <laughs> <laughs> you can't just have fun out there because it's not just a hobby we practice day in day out we fucking we get sore we there's days where I walk into work and I'm just like oh don't touch me <laughs> don't, don't don't touch me like you know it's just I, I never thought I was gonna like it as much as I do I'm the kind of person, I'm a very, very passionate person, and I hate the fact that I love it so much because I am so passionate, but the thing about it is that I'm not the kind of person that's like, oh, well, I'm going to fuck them up next time because of how I messed up last time. It's more like, oh, I don't want to do that again, and it's like tears, 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 and it's just, it hurts. It's, it just, it gets to the point where it just hurts. I love that because you went from, I don't know if I tried it, I don't know if I like it, to this, you know, you're a lot more passionate about it. You take things more personally. It's not just about, oh, I want to go out there and just, I want to play football and learn it and woohoo, have fun. It's a recreational thing. It's, there's a reason why we get out there, get all beat up, bruised up, and hurt ourselves because it's our passion for what we love to do. Game from here on matters. It's about having a game face, it's about being focused. Whatever happened, at work, or with your significant other, or your family, or anything like that. Off the field. Right now, it's all about football. It's all you think about. She came up. Now watch this. All right. She. You can tell she's kind of big. Kind of. Turn up field. Right over a linebacker. Here I am. Trying to uh, 
tackle people. Wash my hands with magic soap. Is that your Bless the hands. Bless the hands. Blessing the hands. I get an extra blessing because I have to rewash them after I put the soap away. Doubly blessed. Superstitious stuff players do. Yeah, like I don't wash my my gear. You don't wash your what? My gear. You're not supposed to wash your gear, but you can reach the it so it doesn't smell like. It's been about six years since I washed my funk. I don't let anybody put my helmet on or my shoulder pads. It's just oh, not I don't okay. Wash anything. That's just not okay. They're, they're meant for my protection. I mean, other than my underwear, but. Do I my wash bra. Your I don't wash my bra. I don't wash. My girdle, I don't wash. You don't wash your bra? I don't wash my under armor. I don't you wash stinky, you stinky my, uh, oh, the only thing I do wash is my um, bandana. That's you because. Kid I love it. <laughs> There's no room for this. Again, I gotta put my cleats on. Ready, Betty? Yes. That's the one. <laughs> you young rats. You youngins. I'm not that young. I'm a quarter of a century. I'm almost half a century. What? For reals? I think we established this. Yeah, you and then I forgot. 21. Seven minutes. She wants me to say I'm 46. You are? 46. 46. 46. That's, I turned 46. <laughs> 25, 46. I wish I were 25. Are you 25? Yeah. Oh. How'd you think I was? I'm 21 years older than you. You could be my mom. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm kidding. I'm just, I could be. I mean, yeah, if you have babies, like, it's like I can drink. Oh, I'm pregnant. Stay <laughs> away. All right, we're in somebody else's house. They're trying to christen a new field. That ain't happening on our watch, ladies. That ain't happening on our watch. Get mean, get nasty, play some football out there, ladies. Have fun, make sure you hit them hard, and then help them back up, because you want to hit them again. All right? Here we go, here we go, ready? Hit! Remember, when you hit your helmets, you say hit. Hit! Um, there were a lot of really good plays. Unfortunately, those plays didn't add up to anything because we made mistake after mistake, and that wasn't only on the field. Um, we had a lot of quarreling on the sideline, um, and you, you, there can't be 20 fingers and name calling and throwing of helmets. You've got to control your emotions on and off the field. Anybody else have anything to say? Yeah, I got something to say. Seriously, the quarreling, the pointing fingers, that you gotta get your fucking block, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, that stuff's gotta stop. Okay, we all made mistakes tonight. I fucking thought it was a run play, one is a pass play, and probably 35 other mistakes. We all made mistakes, okay? Remember last night when we were in that room and we were a family? Why does that change? Why does that change if somebody misses a block? If somebody misses the block, I'm gonna be like, dude, you'll get it next time. Why are we discouraging each other? You wanna go 0 and 8 this season? Keep it up. Keep throwing the fucking helmets at each other, apparently. Stop right now. Come on. We got, we got to come together as a family or we're fucked.
We're not having any fun yelling at each other. Everybody's making mistakes. If you're gonna yell somebody, yell something positive and encouraging and lift them up. No more pointing fingers and blaming. That's just gotta stop. We don't play that way. Quake, those of y'all who've been on the team for a while, we know that we keep that away. So it's gotta stop. Everybody, seriously, it sucks to be down whatever the fuck. I can't even read it because they don't have bulbs. Okay, it sucks to be down. Okay, it sucks to lose. But we cannot implode and yell at each other. It's not right. Our talent does not show on the back end scoreboard. We gotta put some points up there. Defense, offense, we gotta put them up there. You guys have got to talk to each other. Talk it up. Encourage each other. After a fucking tag on, let me see some goddamn high fives. Let's let's do this shit, ladies. We got this. There is so much fucking talent out here. But it's all going to shit up. if we keep if we keep yelling at each other. Don't yell at each other. You don't have to love everybody, but you gotta like everybody and you gotta play as a fucking team and a fucking family on the field. Then when we get on the bus, do whatever. Respect. Capital fucking R respect for everybody. Seriously, we owe that to each other. We've been doing this since January, whatever the hell. We owe each other respect. Everybody's been putting in time for 50-something practices. Hours, hours driving, money on gas, time away from work and family and all that stuff. Everybody is working hard. There's not one person out here that's skipping along and like bullshitting. So respect each other. Come on, it's time we do this. Seriously, we got a game next week. This shit's over, we're done. Go shower it off, drink it down, whatever. Tuesday, we're fresh against who? Is it New Mexico? New game. New game next week. Fuck it, okay? Um, Let's learn from I this. I was gonna say, because I was telling everybody, hold your man, you know, win your battle, da -da -da. I was in no way insinuating anybody in specifically. I was just saying, you know, like I told you in the email, just win your battle and we'll, we'll, be, we'll be victorious from all the way there. So it's just so long as you hold your man, you're good to go. And I wasn't, in, I wasn't blaming anybody if that is towards me. I know, I'm just saying so everybody knows. I, I wasn't. I prefer to hear win your battle rather than hold your man. Whatever works. Seriously. You guys, this is a four-quarter game. If I ever hear anybody during halftime say something about the outcome of this game against us that's wearing this, don't ever do that shit. Don't ever. This is a four-quarter game. I don't care what the fucking score is at halftime. You stay positive. You keep your heads up. Damn it. I just want to apologize for throwing, having my little temper tantrum. So my apologies. It just gets frustrating. And I took it out on my helmet. And I should have took it out on the chick that was in front of me. So my apologies. It will never happen again. Thanks. Jay? Like I told you guys at halftime, we need 11 killers on the field. Offense and defense. We have to want it. We're playing flat like it's a rec league and all that shit. You guys are, we have put in too much. This is professional women's football. Who gives a shit if we don't give a, get a check? We are here trying to send a message. And right now the message that we send in is fucked up. I don't even want my kids to see this shit. Do you guys have something that you're playing for? Because ain't nobody showed it yet. What the fuck are we playing for? Is it a rec league or are we doing something? Are we showing something? I don't like to get my ass whooped as a team. On defense, I call a few people out. I'm not trying to disrespect you guys, but I'm trying to let you guys step up. We need 11 fucking killers on the field. <coughs> PAT, punt, all of that shit. We just flat, we like lost. We don't know what the fuck we doing. Hell, hit somebody. Whenever in doubt, put a bitch on our back. Eventually, we gonna get the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you all kind of feel like you're in it together. You know, you want to accomplish something that, that women before you have tried and failed to do, and that's to bring women's football to a level of, of professionalism in, in that, you know, we become a national sponsored league and, you know, we get paid to play. Um, we don't have to worry about, you know, our health, physical health, or even mental health. You know, all of those things would be taken care of you know, once, if and when we reach the level that, you know, we hope to someday. The NFL, they, they have the, the sponsors that they're, they're able to promote themselves. You know, they have TV ads, newspaper ads. I mean, it just goes on and on and we don't have that. You know, we have to spread the word individually. And in the smaller cities and the smaller venues, I think uh, some of their 
their games are televised or they get more exposure within their little community. But we're in freaking LA, you know, like one of the largest cities and venues there are. So like, it, it's just hard for us to get that exposure. No one wants to take a chance. No one, either they don't know about us or they hear about us and they're like, oh, the little lingerie, that's cute. Women football players, okay, you know? <laughs> it's funny because the only thing that most people have ever heard of when it comes to women's football is Powder Puff from high school or the Lingerie League. Um, and that's it. When I first heard Lingerie football, when they were doing the halftime show, I thought it was a joke, you know. And you know, women running around in lingerie with pads on, and from what I saw, not really hitting each other. It, it was like, why, why are they getting paid and we're not? Why are they on TV and we're not on TV? You know, and it's because men want to see women in lingerie. Um, and it's 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 really a, a blow to what we're trying to accomplish. You know, it kind of hinders us in our attempt to grow when all the focus is now on women in underwear. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but um, it turns out that actually one of the girls that I coached at one point has joined one of the teams. Sign your face. I will sign your face. I get 50 face. bucks for you if you sign my face. Right here. Right here. You gotta come on. I can't come on. You gotta come through like this. I started playing with uh, the LA Temptation because one of the girls that plays on that team went to practice with the Quake for a season. So that coach called me and he was like, you know, I know one of the main reasons that you couldn't play with the Quake anymore is because it was a time commitment. Well, you can still play football and it's a little bit less of a time commitment that you might be able to manage. Like, are you interested? And I was like, well, what is it? And he told me it was the lingerie football league. And I was like, oh, you know. But um, one of the big differences is they pay you to play lingerie football, which you do not get paid to play quake football. You pay to play. So the idea of making money to play football and like technically be considered a professional athlete was very appealing to me. Tomorrow night, the Los Angeles is only pro football team. The LA Temptation of the Lingerie Football League will play for the right to go to the playoffs. They'll head outdoors and play on the famed Coliseum Field. You know, in quick football, you earn your position by your ability to play. On the Temptation, you have to be able to play well, but you also have to lurk a certain way. Even if you're a good athlete, but you're overweight, you're not going to be visually appealing in the uniform, things like that, they're not going to let you play. And just because you made the team initially doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be playing in all the games. There's usually a, a couple people on each team that have gained a little bit of weight or something since they made the team. And they'll tell them, okay, you know, you need to come in and see the owners before the game in your uniform, and they will decide then whether you meet their criteria for playing in the game. So we call them fat checks. That's what, we, oh, you gotta go for their fat check. And, you know, it's it was kind of hard because, you know, you understood it. You joined the team knowing this. But at the time, you're like, that's so unfair, you know? Like, why should they have to look a certain way? But it's business, you know? But they would, what a stress for them, you know, like the week before the game, you know, they're dieting, they're doing extra cardio, they're doing all that stuff so that they can pass their fat check. Why am I here? I'm here because I'm supporting number four. Because I used to coach her, actually. I, I used to be a position coach and she was one of my players. And I came out here to support her. Not necessarily the sport, but her. Because she's a very good player. I'm 
My thoughts about lingerie football. You're asking me my thoughts about lingerie football. Um, Show more skin. The ladies, um, the ladies give it their all and they sacrifice a lot out there for what they're given. Um, is it real football? No. But there are some models out there that have some athletic skills and really sacrifice. Um, they, I mean, it, people would be surprised how much those girls play and how hard they play, how much they train. Um, but. It's kind of a joke when I coach women's football for real um, to see them with that many people in the stands because sex sells. But I mean, that's life. Yeah, it's funny because the movie A League of Their Own, they had to do that. They really had to sex up what they were doing to get people in the stands and to, kick, to keep it going. So I guess it all depends on what you're willing to do to continue doing what you love to do. If I can get somebody to come and get interested in it by wearing a small outfit, I'm okay with that. You know, as long as they come and they can see it and they give it a chance, it's all about women playing football, you know, but you have to do something different to draw a crowd. There's so much involved in playing women's football and yet we all still do it because we love it. Like it takes so much from us and the one thing that it gives us is the opportunity to do what we love. 60 minutes. That's it. This is your last opportunity to be a team and play like a team. It's a culmination of everything we've built right now. It's a passion. I love it. I breathe it. I sleep through it. I dream about it. It's like to be able to have that opportunity, many, many women don't even know about this yet. Whenever I'm out there, all I can think about is just like all those laps, all those tears, all that sweat, all that hitting, all those bruises, all the bumps. It's right here. It's like it's, the, the time is here and now, and you gotta you gotta prove it. You gotta make it worthwhile. Or did you just waste your time? Did you just get all bumped up and hurt for nothing? Cause you're just gonna go out there and just give up. Football is everything. It's everything. It's completely changed my life. Uh, growing up, wanting to play football, wanting to be a part of something uh, of this stature, um, and being able to do it and fulfill that dream, it's amazing. It's like going to war together. Like you, you hit the battlefield and you're there for each other, you have each other's backs, and you're in it together, do or die, win or lose. You're in it together. But for these last 60 minutes, Remember that you are part of something bigger than yourself. You are part of a team. <laughs> for the last time, ladies, for the last time, we are! Why? We are! Why? We make the ground! Shake!